In our experience talking about GD&T and working with thousands of professionals, we have seen some students succeed really well, while others have a harder time to grasp the material. For this video, we put together an overview of the three biggest factors that contributed to students learning GD&T much more effectively. You all probably have GD&T on your prints now, or you are beginning to see it used more and more. Whether you believe it's the best system of communication, or you are fighting with it every day, the truth is that you are only going to be seeing it more and more on your drawings, and you need to know how it works. If you are thinking about learning GD&T, here are the three essential factors that will make it so that you can learn faster, retain the information, and will be able to use it more fluently in your work. The most effective way to learn GD&T is by focusing on how concepts all relate together, understanding how GD&T is used on real drawings, and learning how you currently use GD&T in your actual work. The GD&T standard tries to cover every scenario you can possibly think of. Although necessary, this makes GD&T seem too broad and complicated. The good news is that there are simple rules that relate all of the symbols together in a framework that will allow you to understand and retain the information much easier. For example, there are really only four ways we can ever control something on our part. These are size, location, orientation, or form. Size is the tolerance of how big something is, like a width or a diameter. Location is a tolerance of how far that feature is from other critical features. Orientation is similar and is simply how tightly angled the feature is to other features. And finally, form is the tolerance for how tightly the features must adhere to a given shape. Every symbol or concept in GD&T is controlling one of these elements or a combination of them. For example, flatness only controls form or the shape of how wavy a surface can be. It does not control how big something is or its location or orientation in 3D space. Breaking down the symbols into these four elements is extremely helpful for making the standard more approachable. Next, you need to work with GD&T on real prints, not just in theory. If you went to school for your career, do you remember how much of a shock it was when you first had to take engineering theory and apply it to real work? It was overwhelming. Despite this, how did you learn how to do most of the things at your job right now? Well, chances are that you learned most of it through seeing things done correctly on the job. This is learning through osmosis, the way most of us have learned since we first began working with real parts. Therefore, we absolutely recommend that you focus on how GD&T is seen on real engineering prints, not just theoretical examples. These prints could be from your company or from an example book that you find. I guarantee that when you learn something and then study how it was used on a realistic print, it will dramatically reinforce what you learn. And finally, it is important to identify how you currently work with your prints and what you do with the GD&T on them. For example, if you're a quality inspector, you need to know how to inspect parts. This means you should learn common inspection methods for the symbols, learn what equipment will work, understand the goal of the callouts, and understand the limit for your measurement. However, this would be different from a designer, where you may need to learn which symbols work to meet the design function. Identifying how you're going to be using these concepts at your job makes approaching and learning GD&T much simpler. The GD&T Public Workshop is the only training available that focuses on simplifying GD&T instead of blasting you with a bunch of theory that you hope to remember. Throughout the training, we bring things together with the simple GD&T Basics Framework. 
In the training, you will get our premium GDNT wall chart. This ties all the symbols back to their fundamental elements of size, location, orientation, and form, making things easy to remember. We know how confusing this stuff can be, so we have designed our course with the number one goal of making sure you walk away fully confident that you will retain what you learn. Next, we love using real prints in our training. You will dive into what each callout means, learn how you would inspect them, and figure out why the GDNT is on there in the first place. Our example drawings are always the focus. This, combined with our 3D printed part examples, means you can rest assured that you understand how things work in the real world, not just in theory. And finally, by taking our seminar, you will walk away with actionable guidance that will improve how you work with engineering drawings in your day-to-day -day work. For example, we'll review traditional and digital inspection methods for each symbol. This is great for those in machining or in the quality department. In addition to those benefits, you'll also have full access to our instructors to ask any questions you like, including reviewing your prints or designs. We want you to walk away with a full understanding of how to improve the work you do. If you're interested in truly learning GDNT, you should sign up for our GDNT Basics Workshop. Here's everything you get with our GDNT training. Our next public seminar will be in beautiful San Diego on March 18th and 19th, 2020, for our GDNT Fundamentals program. As a bonus for this event, we'll have an evening reception immediately following the first day of training. Here you'll be able to have some food and beverages with all your fellow students and your instructors and catch up with professionals in your industry. Be sure to click the button below to learn more about the GDNT Basics Public Workshop or download the overview PDF. Thanks for watching this video and we hope to see you at the workshop.